Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be in the presence of the living God and his kingdom this morning. Thank you so much for the invitation. And thanks again for allowing me to be in your presence this morning, to giving you one more lesson. And by the grace of the Lord, I stand here before you to teach you this morning again. The title of my message for this morning is Three Different Kinds of People. Thanks, Brother Alex, for the scripture reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, and also in the chapter 3, verse 4. Let's go with the introduction. This sermon is a sermon for any kind of person. The sermon that I prepared for this morning, I was thinking to preach this sermon almost two weeks ago, but I changed my mind and I teach a different sermon, but this sermon is for any kind of person. Some sermons are to convert the lost souls with a plan of salvation, plan of conversion according to the Bible. But other sermons are to feed and correct believers or the Christians. That's the purpose of another sermon. But definitely, this sermon is for you and is for me. Three kind of people. When we talk talk about we are thinking in the spiritual man and also the carnal man this is the three different kind of people that there are the natural man of course is a man or a person when I'm saying a man and including also the woman or the human being but I just wrote man following a, a biblical order when the Bible talks about the man, it's including both, both sex, man and woman. The natural man is a man that he doesn't know God or she doesn't know God. Like First, like first Corinthians chapter 2, 14 says, the things of God are foolishness, are craziness for that person, for the natural man. The spiritual man is a different man. He was a natural man, but now he's a believer. Jesus changed his mind or her mind. And also the carnal man. We are going to be explaining more in the following paragraph. The carnal man is a Christian that is looking both sides. He wants to be sometimes on the world, and sometimes he wants to be with God. Let's start with the natural man. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are a spiritual Spiritually discern, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The natural man, the man without God, the man that is not a Christian, the man that he doesn't know God, he, know, he doesn't know Jesus, he doesn't know nothing about the spiritual sin. The Apostle Paul says, receive not the things of the Spirit of God. He's not agree. He doesn't want to receive. He doesn't want to learn the spiritual thing. And those, all those things, the Apostle Paul says, are foolishness unto him. To be a Christian is something crazy. To be early right here in the building is something crazy. It's foolishness. Neither, said the Apostle Paul, can he know them? 
because they are spiritually discerned, we have to have, or it's necessary to have, understanding to understand the spiritual thing. It's necessary to have the spirit of God. Paul's, the message of the Apostle Paul and his method was always simple because the gospel of Jesus Christ is something simple that every human being is able to understand. His message was Christ and King crucified. I want that you remember something in this lesson this morning. When the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians, he was writing down a letter to a culture that was so smart, or they considered themselves so smart. The Greek, a lot of philosophers over there, a lot of smart people over there. But let's see what was the, the method and the purpose or the message of the Apostle Paul. He said, it's Christ and he crucified. What craziness for the Corinthians or for the Greeks to hear a message of someone that was crucified. Because every single person that was crucified by the Roman Empire is, was because he was a criminal. And how is possible that this man is teaching a message of someone that was murdered or crucified on a tree? How is possible that? That's craziness. But what, that was the message of the Apostle Paul. Talk about Christ and he crucified. The Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians, for I determine not to know anything among you save or accept Jesus Christ and him crucified. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. The Apostle Paul, he was a very intelligent man. But he said, I don't want to be talking about my intelligence. I want to be talking about Jesus. When I was converted, I was almost 17 years old. And the man that converted me was a farmer. He only went to the school for about two years. But he knew how to read the Bible. He knew to, how to write it down. And the most important thing, he knew the message of God. And he preached me the message of God. And that is amazing, because a couple of months later, the Lord God started to using me to start teaching and helping the local congregation. But the important was the message. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying. For I determine not to know anything. The Greeks is a marvelous culture, the Apostle Paul is saying. But I don't care about that. I just want to continue talking about Jesus Christ and he crucifies. His method was to preach in God's power, not in his own intelligence. Let's forget about that. Let's forget if I am a doctor, if I am an engineer. Let's forget about those things. That's only for this world. That's so important profession, but only for this world. The Apostle Paul is saying, my message is Christ and King crucified. My method to preach in God's power. Probably Paul is making reference about the miracles and about the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to him. He said, 
and I was with you in witness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonst demonstration of the spirit and, and of power. First Corinthians chapter three, chapter two, verse three and verse four. When he said demonstration of the spirit and power, he's making reference about the Holy Spirit and the power to perform miracles among the Corinthians. Right now, we don't have the power. I don't have the power. You ask me, or somebody asked me, Carlos, can you perform some miracle for me or some sign for me? I can do that. How is going to be my message? How is going to be my method to continue spreading or teaching the word of God, right? My message has to be continue the same message. Christ and him crucified. That Jesus is the son of God. That he is the way to go heaven. If you want to go heaven, if I want to go heaven, I need to trust and believe in Jesus Christ as the son of God. That's the only way to go heaven. How is going to be my method? I'm not able to perform signs or miracles. My method is going to be to continue teaching the Bible, the Word of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm not ashamed. That's what the Apostle Paul says to the Roman. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God. We still have the power of God with us. That is the Bible. Our method is going to be continue teaching the word of God. There is a plan of salvation right here to reach the natural man. We were natural men. And we were reached by the power of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Bible. That was the purpose of the Apostle Paul all the time. Not only with the Corinthians, but with every human man. Remember when he was before the King Agrippa. In chains, he was teaching and preaching to the king. On the jail, he was teaching to the jailer in everywhere. The Apostle Paul wanted to reach the natural. Corinth, I got some information about the city of Corinth, a city of, of Greece. Corinth was a major city of the Roman Empire at the time of the Apostle Paul in the first century. And an important crossroads of trade and travel. It was also, pay attention to this, Corinth, it was also a city notorious for its hedonism and immorality. Corin was a remarkable reputation for loose living and especially sexual immorality. In classical Greek, to act like a Corinthian was to practice fornication. And a Corinthian companion was a prostitute. For the Apostle Paul, it was a very hard job to reach the natural man in Corinth. It was too hard, but not impossible. Remember, the gospel is the power of God to save 
everyone. It was a hard job, but that was the plan of the Apostle Paul. He wanted to reach the natural man. The natural man is a man who has not been born again. I will say at the beginning, he is not a Christian. He doesn't know about God. For the natural man, the Bible is a dark book. The Bible is not a dark book. But for the natural man, the Bible is a dark book. It's a bored book. Start reading a couple of verses. This is so bored. I don't want to continue reading this. But the natural man is able to read a different book in a couple hours. But he is not, or she is not interested to read the Bible because it's a bored book. It's a dark book. It's a book with contradictions. It's a book that was written by a man. It's a book that is not true. That's the way. That's the the, the, the way to think of the natural man. Probably we thought in the same way. We were natural men. And we thought in the same way that we are mention, mentioning right now. I don't want, I'm not interested to read the Bible. I don't care about the Bible. That's what the natural man think. That was the Corinthians were thinking. His destiny, what is going to be the destiny of the natural man is destruction. Unfortunately, his destiny is going to be destruction. Every human being is naturally lost. We are lost. If we are not Christian, if we are living without God, we are lost. For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. That was the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans. For all, every human being, we have seen. And we continue sinning. No practice is sin, but we are not perfect. We sin. But the Bible said that we now we have an advocate, a mediator. What about the spiritual man? But he that is a spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of now man. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Now the Apostle Paul is talking about the second man, the spiritual man. And we find right here a very interesting word. The word judges is the Greek word abakpibor. I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly this word in Greek. I don't know Greek, but that's the word for these word judges. That means discern, understand, comprehend. In other words, the spiritual man, when the Bible says judges all things, means discern or understand or comprehend all things. That's the way of living of the spiritual man. The spiritual man is a person that if somebody didn't say hello, it's no feeling bad or is not accusing he is giving the benefit of the doubt all the time because he see the war in a different way anything that is happening or everything that is happening in the war he's thinking God is in control of everything like brother Pete was saying 
God is living in our heart. It doesn't mean that it's a blind person. We see what is good and what is bad. But we discern and understand all the things. That's what the, the, the word judges mean right here, discern. It's not, it's, it's not mean that it's a judge. It's discerning or understanding anything. He's patient. He's, he's a, 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 a person full of love. And the spiritual man was once a natural man. We were once natural men before to be a spiritual man. The spiritual man was somebody that was lost, but the Bible said that now has been found. Jesus Christ found him. He was going hell, but now he's going heaven. Now he's going in the right direction, but before he was going in the wrong direction. But now he's going heaven. The spiritual man has the mind of Christ. In other words, the spiritual man is thinking at the same way that Christ taught. The spiritual man has the mind of Christ because he's talking as Christ spoke the same way. And he's walking as Christ walked. The Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians in the chapter 11, verse 1, be imitators of me as a young imitator of Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul, he was saying, have the mind of Christ at the same way that I have the mind of Christ. That's the way of living of the spiritual man. He has the mind of Christ. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Now the apostle Paul is saying to the Corinthians, you are no anymore natural man. Now you are a spiritual man and you got the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. In other words, a spiritual man is not a perfect man. We're not saying that he's a perfect man. But he is a mature believer. I'm not saying that it's perfect. Perfect only God. But he's a mature believer. He judges. He understands. He discerns all things. He's patient. He's mature. Or she's mature believer. He's going to be growing up day after day. He's going to be Hungry every moment and every day. He wants to be learning more and more of the Lord. More of the Bible. The Holy Ghost is his teacher. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. The Holy Spirit is his teacher. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is coming from God. Jesus Christ promised the Holy Spirit to his friend, the Apostles, and they received the Holy Spirit. Book of, but the Apostle Paul 
now is writing down to the Gentiles, the Corinthians. And he is also saying, we, including himself in the Corinthians, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. The Corinthians also received the Holy Spirit. We also have received the Holy Spirit. So that may we know the things freely given to us by God. Freely. We don't have to pay anything. Jesus paid everything. And now we have received it freely the things given to us by God. Freely. We have a free salvation. We only had to study the Bible. We only had to continue faithful to the end. But everything is free. Not because if we continue doing this one, it's by our own work that we're going to be saved. But it's because God is giving this one freely. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying to the Corinthians. What about the third man, the carnal man? And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and now with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For I while one fed a young of Paul and another a young of Apollos, are ye not carnal? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 4. Now the Apostle Paul is talking about the carnal man. This is not a natural man. But this is a spiritual man and carnal man at the same time. He's a Christian. This one is a Christian. But the Apostle Paul is saying, but they are babes in Christ. I need or I must continue giving you, Corinthians, that's what the Apostle Paul is saying, milk. I cannot give you meat because you are not able. You are babes in Christ. We cannot give solid food or solid meals to the babes, but we give milk. The Corinthians were Christians, but they were babes in Christ. And the Apostle Paul is saying, you are still carnal. I have fed you with milk. And not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are able. And there are divisions, envying among you, and some of you are saying, I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. The Apostle Paul says, are you not carnal? Yes, of course, you are carnal. In the chapter 5, we read an example of immorality. The son living with his father's wife. Carnal. In chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, we read such were fornicators, adulterers. You were, but now you have been sanctified, justified. In Christ Jesus. You were. Who 
contrast between these three men. The natural man lives for the moment without hope. Just thinking, I had to work hard, I had to support my family, I had to enjoy the life. It's living just for the moment. The spiritual man makes treasures in heaven. The spiritual man is working for the Lord, making treasures. It's a pleasure for him or for her to be doing something for his Lord. The carnal man tries to look both ways. The war in heaven, he knows he knows that the, that the war is lost, but he clings to it. And he knows what is good, but he doesn't do it. The carnal man is like Lot wanting to stay in Sodom. Almost the same way of Lot. To conclude the lesson, what kind of person are we? Or what kind of person are you? Natural man, the spiritual man, or the carnal man? Jesus, the Son of God, is able to change your life. He came down and died for you. Now, the only thing that we need to do is come to Jesus Christ, confessing his holy name, repenting of all sins, and be baptizing for the forgiveness of all sins. But the decision is yours. Thank you so much for your, your attention, and the lesson is yours. God bless you.